Okay, this is my uh, continuation of understanding the degradation of and what the best. Let's. I shouldn't say the word best. I don't like that. Um, the, the better cycling range for the batteries. Um, so this is the degradation curve that I'm kind of comfortable with. I think this is pretty close to what it might look like. Um, I have not found this in literature, so I'm kind of guessing. But it brings into the pieces that I've seen in literature. The 80 to 20, the 20 to 80 range tends to be uh, uh, fairly stable. It's never zero, so this I, I, I took away the y-axis because there's no units that I know of. I, I mean, I know units, but I don't know actual numbers, so I don't want people thinking there's an actual number that I know here. Um, but I know that the degradation, while it exists at the low end, you can fully discharge these batteries, and in fact, they don't die. They still will have capacity left. They'll have quite a bit of their capacity left, in fact. I wouldn't recommend doing it frequently, but I have done it. Uh, not in solar, but when I was out of my electric car, I, I, I fully discharged my batteries, not intentionally for sure. Um, and I was able to recharge them and they were fine. Um, but on the high end, I know also that uh, I have overcharged, uh, never any of my large batteries, but I have overcharged small, smaller batteries. I have 40 amp hour batteries that I, that I destroyed a couple of them. They, they basically, when you, when you overcharge them, what happens is the battery swells. So it's supposed to vent that, uh, the vent, the, I don't know if those vents work or not, but the battery will actually bulge, you'll get severe bulging of the battery. Um, and when you try to charge, if you measure the capacity after you see the bulging, usually it's completely dead, they're, they're, or very close to dead, it's not, never zero, but it's, it's, you've lost usually over 50% of your capacity, mine had lost like 80% of the capacity. Um, but, so the high end is I think a higher rate. Uh, that's because you're actually degrading the electrolyte, right? What's happening here is you're electrolyzing the the electrolyte. Electrolyzing the electrolyte. That's the way you say it, yes. Uh, so basically, you're breaking down the, the 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 you're breaking the electrolyte into its into its constituent elements, just like when you electrolyze water. Once you reach a certain voltage, the water will split into hydrogen and oxygen. It's the same thing's happening to your electrolyte here. And once you destroy the electrolyte, the battery no longer functions. Um, but that's less important for this cycling. So the whole cycling idea, here what I did is um, I took some numbers that I've seen. This is completely made up, by the way. This I never found in literature. I'm guesstimating this based on, I did have a literature number, um, but the, the literature number was incomplete. So, so I'm just going to leave that number for now. But these numbers I've seen in, in plenty of battery specifications. So what I did here, so this is the cycling at 20%. Or 80% DOD and 50% DOD. Um, and here's a cycle life. Now, what I didn't take into account before was, yes, the cycle life is increasing, but the total power that you're getting out of the batteries is not increasing. right? So then I took the total power, which is, right, because I'm going to 50% depth of dip charge versus a 20% depth of discharge or a 10% depth of discharge. Oh, that's kind of hard to say fast. Um, you're getting less power, right? There's only 10% discharge. This is a 50% discharge. So you're getting five times more power out of it than you're getting out here. While you may get more cycles, you've got to get five times more cycles in order for it to be, uh, to, to, to balance out. In other words, to get the same amount of total power. So this creates a, an interesting question for me, um, or an interesting problem, because do I care more about having lots of cycles, or do I care about getting lots of power? Right, the total power, I don't know if this is large enough for people, but this is the total power line. Right, so, so the total power um, is, 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 I guess that's important for me, but um, it's probably more important to me to get more cycles than it is to get more power. Um, right, because this is completely voluntary for me. I can I can turn on dump loads and try to maintain my batteries down at 50%, which is going to be quite difficult in the summer, actually. My dump loads won't be able to keep me here. Um, but keeping myself at 50%, 50 while I get more power out of the batteries, it's not useful power, right? I'm, I'm artificially uh, cycling the batteries in order to get the power out. But it's not, uh, I'm not necessarily using the power. In fact, it's not even coming to, to me or to my home. So uh, it's, not, uh, it's not necessarily that I want to get the maximum power out as I want to get the maximum cycles because this will translate into the years of use, right? For me, I'm, uh, you know, 
if I could get 15,000 cycles, even if I cycled them every day at 10%, which which I definitely do, actually. 10% depth of discharge is, is, is about what I do every day um, as a minimum. So more cycles, if I do that every day, if I could get 15,000 cycles, well, that's 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 a lot of years. <laughs> I don't know, three, it's about 45 years, something a little less than that. But um, So I, this is the better situation for me is to have higher cycles and less total power whereas for other people who, who, who you know everybody's situation could be quite different here you could be looking to optimize the total amount of power that you get out of your batteries um, uh, the obvious case would be um, anybody who's who's using these as to offset their their uh, electrical usage in their home right in other words they're doing it as a, a way to reduce their electric bill if you're trying to reduce your electric bill, what you care about is the total power. Even if the batteries only last 8,000 cycles, which is still quite a, quite a few years, um, you want to optimize the total amount of power because you want to minimize the cost per kilowatt hour, right? So you want to get the most, because the cost of the batteries is fixed. So your costs are fixed. What you want to do is maximize the power that you're able to get out of those batteries. So that's one situation, but my situation is quite different from that. I'm off grid. My... my, my I don't have an electric bill, so my electric bill isn't going to get reduced any more by me if I if I if I do four hundred thousand. I, I don't have units here again. This is I, I did it kind of as amp hours, but um, this is energy. Just think of it as five four hundred thousand units of energy versus three hundred thousand units of energy. Neither one of these is going to change anything for me. My I don't need the power, so it's not like um, I'm naturally going down to 50% depth of discharge. It's no, it would not be there would be no natural condition that would cause that to happen, other than you know us having a, an eclipse of the sun for three months or something. Um, it would be it would be very unusual for me to get down to these 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 power uses this this depth of discharge naturally. So what I really want is higher cycle life. So I think this is still correct. I think I want to still keep cycling my batteries at the high end. I might go to twenty percent um, uh, because I don't, you know, it's, it's not not a problem to uh, to, to cycle them. Uh, uh, you know, ten percent, twenty percent. I don't distinguish these these kind of. I don't know the cycle. That no one, there's very little literature, at least it's free on the web anymore that can distinguish these because nobody tests them under the conditions like solar would be, which are very low C rates. You know, in other words, the the these are 300, I have 900 amp hours of batteries there. There are three 300 uh, cells in parallel. So 900 amp hours, if you're doing this even at 1C, is way, way, way beyond what solar can do. And when you're talking about 15,000 cycles, the studies just haven't gone on this long. I mean, this takes, you, you, you might be able to do five cycles a day, but you're still talking about 3,000 days. This is almost 10 years of work for someone to do cycling like this, and no one has done it. The data is simply not available. But the cycle life, may, the, the 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 degradation rate, if if the the, the curve looks like I showed here, where it minimizes at fifty percent, um, which is what people seem to think, because that's where where, and it makes sense that it would be here, because of the two competing chemical reactions, you're furthest away from both of them if you stay right in the middle. So it makes perfect sense to be at fifty percent. And that's where people always talk about the storage conditions as well. And that makes more sense. Now that I talk about the total power, it makes sense to do that. Um, so let me let me let me know if people agree with this. I'm I'm still a little bit hesitant, but it does seem to make sense to me now if I talk about total power. That's I think what most people are, are trying to optimize. It's more typical, I think, for people to try to optimize their total power because more people are offsetting their electric bills than they are running fully off grid. And the people that are running fully off-grid usually don't have excess battery power, so they're cycling simply because out of need. But if, if you had excess batteries, which is the unusual situation I'm in, uh, you might you might have a different conclusion than you have if you if you have if you have to use them in order to to keep your house with power. So, all right, let me know if anybody has any questions. Hope this makes sense this time.